Hello, this is Christy Strickler with GetItScrap.com. I'm here to talk with you about how to pile new and trendy products on your scrapbook pages while still telling a story. Memory keepers have a goal in mind when they make a scrapbook page. They want their photos to be represented and their stories to be recorded. There is a lot of creative satisfaction to be had in working with new and trendy scrapbooking products. That product can spur you on, it can inspire you to make a new page, especially when it's brand new. We're going to check out seven approaches for piling on new and trendy pieces while still keeping the story in the forefront. Trends do come and go, but the techniques in this video are methods that will always work for you. Our first approach is to write and add your journaling before you add the trendy product. Sean Fair says, this is a page about my discovery of new favorite movie, Moonrise Kingdom. I've been waiting a long time for this public library October afternoon collection to appear. So I piled on as much of it as I dared and combined it with feathers, wood veneer, especially the glasses, and washi tape. I think the best way to make sure the story is there is to add the journaling first. I did this by typing my story up on a fresh 8.5 by 11 page before adding the first embellishment. That way I wasn't going to add too many embellishments and have no space left for the words. Now this is actually good advice for many scrapbook layouts. If you have a specific story to tell, type or write your journaling first and then build the layout around the journaling and your photo. Our second approach to using trendy product on your scrapbook layouts is to choose color to unite a profusion of product. Amy Kingsford says, this page is about appreciating my son for his photogenic qualities. When I took this photo, he was wearing a puffy vest that is two sizes too small for him and gloves on his feet. But the way he looks into the camera, you would never know that this was a completely spontaneous photo. I love playing with trends and finding a way to make them work with my style and story. Here I've used trendy chevrons, stripes, die cuts, flare, and sequins. I often use a lot of product on my pages and I have several approaches for keeping the focus where it belongs. Here I used color as the glue that holds everything together, pulling product from several kits but only in the colors that matched for my scheme. So essentially you can choose a color palette and then choose product that fits that palette. On Amy's page it's a navy blue, a lighter blue, and yellow with gray as the basic for the canvas. In our third approach to piling on new and trendy products, we're going to place essential pieces on the page first and then pile on new and trendy items. Marie-Pierre Capuchon says, this is a page about where my family is at right now. There are lots of trendy elements here. Watercolor background, gold elements, mini wooden clothespins, script title, drops of India ink, chevrons flare, and wooden button with embroidery. On my pages, the story always occupies a lot of space. I plan my page with all I want to say in mind and then I build around it. This way, what is important for me is always taken care of first. Then I can just play with all the elements I love, trendy or not, and have fun. This one's similar to approach number one, but we're taking things a little bit further. This involves the design of your scrapbook page. What is important to you in the design, in your scrapbooking process. Do those things first. For Marie, it's story. For others, it may involve designing a large title. Whatever is part of their style or process, you do that first, and then you look at the trendy items that you can place on your layout. In approach number four, we're going to pile on the product by making sure it all supports your story. Carrie Eric says, this page documents my son's unwillingness to smile for his camera-happy mom at the beach. I started with a pastel ombre paper, pairing it with currently on-trend neon colors. I used PNG versions of silhouette cut files in a trendy beach style. I used cork for embellishing and my journaling and title. I finished the page off with light, trendy gold and vellum accents. I find it's easy to use trends as long as they support your story. For instance, here the cut files, vellum, and colors support the whimsical, loving nature of the story, while the cork adds the warmth and texture of the beach. Using a simple design like a band foundation lets the trendy items work to create a clear story. 
In this approach, you're going to make sure you don't choose a product just because it's new or just because it's on trend. So for example, a deer motif would not work here. So if that's popular at the moment, if it's trendy, you're not going to put it here just because you have it. You're going to look for items with color, motif, and pattern that support the story you want to tell. In approach five, we're going to combine the trendy with the timeless. Christy T says, this layout is symbolic of many trips to the beach in Albany whenever we are on holidays in the summer. I used a recent collection of papers, embellishments, and stickers. I combined on-trend items like metal embellishments, washi tape, the geotag, and the enamel dots with the timeless heart motif. Lots of currently trendy products include text that can be used as the page title and as short journaling bits to support the story and set the mood. In this particular layout, she's chosen a timeless motif, and that would be a good place for you to go as well. Combine the timeless motif with the trendy items. You can also choose a timeless design. We saw that in the example before uh, with Carrie Eric's layout in which she chose a simple band foundation to pull her items together. For approach six, you're going to choose and place products to create repetitions with variety. Karen Poirier Brody says, this page is about visiting Anna's Blackboard in the Palace of Thailand, Siam. I paged through Vogue magazine and saw that red lace is popular and that lace with masculine fabrics is very current. Black and white are also on trend. To get my trendy look, I used yellow and red with black and white neutrals and masculine elements like pinstripes, herringbone, and office supplies. Using a simple color scheme and solid design techniques like incorporating repetitions with variety lets me use more stuff and still keep the design simple and clear. Let's take a quick look at Karen's page. I'm going to point out some of the repetitions to you. She's repeating the red and the lace on the left side of the photo. There's red in the embellishment cluster on top. It's in the bottle cap. And red again on the labels to the far right. Yellow is probably the lightest used color. It's in that cluster at the top with the rose, the heart, and the star, and then appears again in the border below the photo in the labels. Black is used in a variety of weights and patterns throughout the layout, and that's another thing that you can do is vary the patterns and the weight of those patterns as you use them throughout the layout. You'll still get repetition and variety, but it's unified by the color. Our final approach is to choose one trendy product to start with and let it drive the rest of your choices. This is actually a page by me. I captured a photo of my son in a silly pose and used several on-trend pieces, including chalkboard style elements, pattern paper with a brush script, speech bubbles, and neon. When I use trendy materials, I choose one to start with, and then I begin to compile the rest of my supplies. In this case, I started with the brush script pattern paper and chose most of my embellishments to support it from the same collection. So essentially, choose one item and then build your supplies based on that item. We've seen several examples of how you can pile on new and trendy products while still keeping the story in the forefront. Remember that these techniques are timeless and they can be used regardless of the trends. So we all know trends change pretty frequently, but the techniques don't. If you would like to see the original article that accompanied these pages, I'll link to it below this video on YouTube. For more scrapbooking inspiration, visit getitscrapped.com slash blog.